I was so diverse. I didn't look like at the time the stereotypical Australian. I got bullied in school. I've walked into castings and they're like, you're not meant to be here. You have to go um, fit for the Victoria's Secret fashion show. And I go, what? A really beautiful journey for both of us. My skincare line. Probably not got married. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, on today's episode we have our lovely friend Shanina. She is a model, entrepreneur and a mother of a lovely baby boy Zai. Hi Shanina, welcome to the Extra Stitch. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like I haven't seen you guys for a while. I know, more than five years I think. I know. But, but it doesn't feel like that because of Instagram. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about we just we keep in touch through Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have very busy lives. Yeah, very especially busy. now. Yeah, especially as now moms. as moms. So yeah, no, but it's good. I'm so happy to be here. And I feel like like it's like family being here as well because we've yes. like we've flown all over the world together and you know, we've done jobs together. We're on summer holidays together. Marie and I always so yeah. We've been travel together. We've been travel together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That fun stuff. I'm gonna go down my relay. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for the behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bloopers later. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you here today. Thank and, you. And uh, so we're thinking how we're going to start interview. And I think it would be a nice way to start uh, from very beginning. Mm. Uh, so I read, which I didn't know about you, that your mom's roots are from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. But your mom grew up in Australia. Right? Correct, yes. And your dad is Pakistani? Uh, Singapore? He's Pakistani, Saudi Arabian. Okay. Yes. And yes, born in Singapore. <laughs> and your parents met in Australia? Uh, my parents met actually in between Australia and Singapore. They were, my mom was on a cruise ship going to Singapore. My dad was working on the cruise. I was going to ask you, were they on the cruise? Yeah. <laughs> no way. My dad was working on the cruise. So they met uh, like in, on the ocean, I guess. Uh, was he a captain? Uh, he was a manager of one of the, like the fine dining restaurants there. And um, that sounds very romantic. <laughs> it's very romantic. It's actually quite funny how they met. Um, so my grandfather, who's um, the Lithuanian side, he migrated after World War II to Australia. Um, he met my grandmother there, who's Australian, um, fell in love and had a baby, got married. Um, and unfortunately, he passed when my mum was 21. Um, he passed in a car accident. He was a policeman and he got hit by a, a drunk driver. Someone, oh, my gosh. And so he, he passed and... Um, and so the rest of his family are kind of like in Lithuania. So I don't have a very close um, relationship with my Lithuanian roots so much, um, except for his sister. I feel like when we had like Christmas, I had like all the good Lithuanian food. They make vodka <laughs> from scratch. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with potatoes and all this. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but when my grandfather passed away, um my grandmother obviously was mourning and she was depressed and very sad and they um decided after a little bit to, to go on a holiday like you know let's do something nice let's go away for a holiday and um, they went on this holiday um because my grandfather passed and because of that that's where my mom met so my your dad. mom met your dad when she was 21 when she was 22 oh wow yes and they had you at what age 23 my 23 oh quick yeah and they yeah, yeah. based themselves in australia or your dad already lived in australia my dad lived in singapore professed his love to my mom and she kind of like stayed longer and they she went had to go back to australia of course and um he wrote her love letters my mom kept the love letters until yeah i read all the love letters i was like i don't know if i'm gonna like this but yeah i know my dad was like i was like wow what a what a Romeo. <laughs> Is your parents still together? No, they're okay. divorced. Um, so, uh, yeah, they – and then my dad came to Australia um, not long after that because my mom got married. 
to him. Um, she, my dad's Muslim, so my mum t- converted to Islam to marry him. Wow. Yeah, and um, then they came to Australia and had me, my brother, and yeah, and then after like when I was like seven years old, they got divorced. Yeah. I'm blown away by by your story because it's such a big melting pot with different cultures. Very, yeah, very what, diverse family. What do you feel most in heart? I feel very close to my um, more like Saudi Arabian, Pakistan roots. My dad is. I did my 23 and Me. I don't know if anyone's done their 23 and Me. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, it. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, it, I'm. I'm. Just, I'm. My. My map is colorful. <laughs> my 23 map, 23 me map is very, very it's colorful. Like there and there and up there. So my background, my dad's side of the family is also uh, African as well. So uh, from I have like Sudanese and Ethiopian from North Africa. So I have like I a can good. See that. I mean, that's why you're so beautiful. I know. Thank I was, you. I was trying you to say that. Beautiful. Thank you. Like, that's why you have like all of this like. <laughs> great features I have a lot going on but I feel very close to my dad's side Mm -hmm. of the roots as well um yeah and I think through modeling as well that even even till today they've I feel very welcomed in that um community as Mm -hmm. well um especially with the Middle Eastern side yeah but um yeah very diverse I chose to do it because when I met my dad's cousins and um it was the end of Ramadan family come together and had these like he's like this is my cousin and he's like a tall handsome black man I'm like I was like wait there's more to my background than what my mum and dad are saying and I'm sure they don't even know or you know so that's why I did my 23 me as well I want yeah. to like get that's more insight so cool. of my background mm-hmm. yeah makes sense yeah especially <laughs> knowing your mom dad and then you're like okay I gotta know yeah deeper. yeah it's, it's very too. rare Shanina, are you closer to your mom or your dad? Uh, my mom. Your mom? Yeah. I was born and raised in Melbourne, Australia. And um, my mom is amazing. Yeah, she's my, my rock. And I speak to her every day. Um, and obviously after my mom and dad got divorced, my dad uh, moved away and he also went back to Singapore. So my mom was a single mother and taking care of my brother and I. So that must have been hard. Yeah, very, very hard. It was, um, I think for me, I, when I look back, everyone deals with divorce in different ways. And I think I was very strong with how I dealt with it. Um, but I, um, it was very emotional because I saw my dad maybe once a year after that. Yeah, that was, and I was quite close to my dad at the time being young when you're like daddy's girl, when you, as you know, like. Oh, I know. Yeah, you know, oh, you I have know. a little one that's like daddy's girl. And then so losing that um, was really, really hard. But um, my mom, she was very, very strong and, you know, made sure that my brother and I were a priority and that we do have the time with our dad. So whenever my dad was able to, you know, be there, he now lives in Australia and he, you know, he made that route, that journey to come back and live over there. But like my mom never took the time away from my dad and we made sure that like we saw our dad and had holidays with him still and which you know, is how it should be which it should be yeah parents yeah. should never put their kind of relationships in the middle of the kids and mm-hmm. absolutely she sounds like amazing mom yeah so they, she did a great job of co-parenting yeah she was really she's a great mom mm-hmm. i think great i mom. met your mom if you I'm have met my mom i feel like everyone's met my mom I know, I think yeah so. And my mom, if you look at my mom, she's like Caucasian, blonde. And they're like, they're like this is my mom. They're like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, that's your mom? <laughs> I'm like the brown version of her. Yeah. I, we look like exactly the same, but I'm just but, but darker. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that one is cute. Well, Shanina, um, I know the modeling industry mm. was kind of hard for you to break in, right? In the yeah. beginning. We want to know, how did you get from Australia to US and how did you kind of get your first break? Great question. It was hard for you. I think it was all hard for all it of us. It was hard right? for me because I think, I don't know about Ginta, but me and you were kind of a bigger girls, yep. which is ridiculous. Which is crazy. <laughs> when you mean bigger girl? Oh, I was like a, the fat girl out of the... This is ins- you want- it, it's insane. It's insane. because it's insane. We, I, was, I was still 48 kilos, but you had to be like 42 mm. kilos. 
So I know for me, this is not about me, obviously, but I, I can relate. It was mm. super hard the first few years because, oh, she's, her boobs are too big, you know, and uh, she's too big. So how was, yeah, how was For me, um, so I began modeling when I was in Australia and I was doing like child modeling. Baby like, modeling, I've seen that. Yeah, well. like uh, my little catalogs here and there. And that was like my pocket money. And I loved it because, you know, I was so young and getting pocket money and I mm-hmm. kind of came alive in front of the camera and quite shy. So I enjoyed that part of it. And um, But for me, being in Australia and also back then, I was so diverse. I didn't look like at the time the stereotypical Australian, like blonde, blue eyes, surfer girl. You know, I, I, was, I stood out when I went to school um, and I didn't look. Was like, it a good thing for you or a bad thing for you? I got bullied you, in school. You got bullied. That's that. Yeah, yeah, I got bullied in school because of how I looked. And, yeah, it was um, pretty bad. Like, it affected me quite a lot. I stopped going to school. I, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was um, difficult. But it did give me the strength and help me in so many ways. Um, and in some ways I'm glad it happened for me because yeah. I learned a lot. And at a, such a young age, I was, like, 14. I, you know, it was a big lesson to learn. Um, so in – with saying that, bullying can happen to anybody. doesn't matter if you're beautiful, ugly, fat, skinny. Like, you know, kids can be cruel and they, they will pick on you. And and I think there's an idea that being beautiful or pretty or that we don't get picked on or that we have everything together. And it's like I think we get sometimes the worst of it as well. It's really, really hard. So I um I was bullied, but going back to the the good stuff, the better side of it, positive side, I um, decided to do modeling. I wanted to take it more seriously and I wanted to go to New York. So there was a show called uh, Make Me Supermodel. Was and it a TV show? Or? It was a TV show. It was actually aired in um, America first and they decided to trial it in Australia and it was going to be a TV show. And my mom thought it would be a great idea that I go into this TV show and because and you won a contract if you do win you win a contract to go to new york city and model and you have an agency with what 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 agency um new york models New York models. and and then you win a car as well so oh <laughs> yeah amazing yeah win a it's car a yeah, yeah it's a good deal <laughs> and <laughs> so for me my mom thought it would be great because i was started modeling around the time like abby lee Miranda Kerr, Catherine McNeil, all those girls were like doing the part and they were doing really well because they started in Australia and they, they look like the, like an Aussie chick. They look beautiful. They, and they're doing so well till, till today. Um, so I was coming up around them, but I, for me, it was, I couldn't go to the next step of modeling in Australia. Like it just wasn't happening because of my look. And so my mom thought it'd be a great idea if I, go on to this TV show because you shoot with all the top photographers that they'll bring on um, and it'll be like a casting call to the world and to Australia and to the modelling world industry to saying like, I know my look is different but, you know, I, I'm good at this. I know how to model. I know how to be in front of the camera. So my mum thought it would be a great idea and she goes, and hopefully you win. I think you have a great chance. So um, the day of the casting of the show I didn't want to go. How old were you? I was 17. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to. You just wa- got too nervous. I just didn't I was shy. I was scared. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I was like, I think you should really do this show. And I'm like, I really don't want to go. And then down to the last moment where we were like, Shinny, we have to leave. I was like, oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll do it. I'll go. She's like, my mom's like, I'll be there. Don't worry. You'll be fine. And so we're lining up to go for the audition. And it's... I'm in line and they pick me out of the line to go in early to audition. And I auditioned. Everything was great. And then I got a call saying I got a call back to do a call back. You know the modeling shows, America's yeah. Next Top Model would do the call backs and mm-hmm. they put you through like all these trials of like, can she walk? Can she, oh you God. know, be in front of the camera? Can she do bikini? You know, so they had another judge. Um, that flew in from the US, um, Tyson Beckford. <laughs> Stop it. Yes. <laughs> no, I know where it's leading to. <laughs> Marina knows my life. Oh my <laughs> yes. 
I forgot so many things with mom. Right? Yeah. Oh. I remember him because it's so... Yeah. yeah. So he had... um. <laughs> That was one hot He's couple. like, I don't want to yeah. say this, but he's like Voldemort. He, he should not be named. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to talk. But anyway, this is the story. He was a, uh, a judge um, on the show. And while I was doing the callbacks, I um, he took a picture of me, like when we were like filming a commercial, whatever it is. And he went back to the US and showed this picture to Corey, the head of New York Models. and they had a liking towards me from this picture. So I did the show. I was doing really, really well. And I was runner up. So I didn't win. And I was, what? Yeah, I was so upset. Who won? So the great thing about the show, they had guys and girls though too. Mm -hmm. So a guy won. Oh. But I... I th oh, wow. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. But, um, so I became runner up and... I was so upset because so I was upset. like, I've lost my opportunity to go to New York. Like, that's it. It's done. And the car. Yeah, and the I car. Know, I was hoping about the car. Even though I didn't drive yet, like, I was so upset. And because I just really wanted the contract. But because of that photo, I got out. They contacted my agency and they said, we really want to get Shanina to New York and we needed to come over here and we to give her a contract. So I went to New York before the wind hit. <laughs> I flew to New York. Gosh, I don't even remember. It was in January, so I never saw snow my whole entire life. So I'm from Australia. And I landed, it was like January 9th or something like this in um, New York City. And it was like they just had a snowstorm. And I went to the model's apartment. What year was it? Gosh. <laughs> and you were like, where? 2009? I was going to say eight or nine. Yeah, so eight we're or nine. Like two years behind us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And went to the model's apartment and went to the model's apartment, opened the door, no one was there. So I started crying because I was like, I was uh, on Houston, like Avenue B in New York. Oh. I've, I've been in that apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, because of agency, because of the girls. Yeah. I was staying in different uh, model apartments, but we'd always go around. There's like bedroom with a bunch of bunk beds. Yes. Yeah. That's me. I was there. And I was in an apartment with like 10 Russian girls <laughs> during Fashion Week. Because that was the time yeah. when the blonde blue eyes were yes. in. Like you were saying, diversity yeah. didn't come yet. Yeah. Yeah. And and I was like, I feel like I started at a wrong time too because yeah. my look was just like, and you know all this, it was like that era where it was like... Natasha Polly. Yeah, like that weird, beautiful, yeah. alien, mm -hmm. long, lean, and here I come like <laughs> green-eyed, <laughs> exotic, sexy. And also that really bothered me too. When I would go to my castings, they're like, you're too sexy. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was 17, 18, we're like tomboy with jeans and boots and like you're too sexy and I was like I'm not doing anything and it was really hard for me to be you know a teenager still to understand what am I doing wrong and it really like it took a like a mental load over me because I was like what am I doing wrong I felt and you dealt with this as well I'm sure I felt fat I felt wow. bigger and I and I was I was very very thin but I just had not 34 enough. hips you know and I was obsessed with your, my measurements and I look back at Giselle back in her day and she was like had 36 hips 25 waist and a bust she looked amazing but I'm like you get you have to have a really tough skin to to do modeling especially at that time yeah it was really cutthroat so um but one thing that really established for me and did really well was my look because it was so diverse and being in America it was exciting and they had like Latinos and black and so I could go in between they couldn't guess where I was from and they really celebrated my look when I went to New York. Did you do a lot of commercial uh, jobs in the beginning? Um, so my second day in New York I went to a casting I booked a hair campaign. <laughs> A hair campaign. Yeah. Great. With a lot of money. <laughs> I remember those days. Like, hair yeah. campaigns would pay a lot. It was my second second day in New York. So, as you know, for a model, or if anyone's watching, like, when you model, you have to make money. Like, you, you don't come in with money and you need to find something that's going to make you money quick. And we it's don't... not Vogue covers, unfortunately. The Vogue covers don't, you know get you rich mm -hmm. and they don't pay for the model's apartment 
and they don't pay for the cars, you know, and Fashion Week doesn't pay because you're getting paid in trade as well. It's kind of like, yeah, it's crazy. But I booked a hair campaign and I went and saw Victoria's Secret that same week and Maybelline. But at the time they didn't have pink, so I was too young. They kept telling me, like, we, we're, we are interested, but she's too young, mm-hmm. which is, um, yeah. And then Again, I, something. It's like always something. Always something. Right? But it was really great for me because – so my plan was just to trial in New York and see how I go um, and then go back to Australia. And I was like, and then maybe come back here and there and just model. But because I was doing so well, uh, the agency asked me, would I be willing to move to New York? And I was like, just turned 18. Yeah. Did you finish up the school in Australia? or No, I finished... <laughs> My second last year. And it's not a big deal in Australia to fin- to not oh, finish school. Oh, I never school. finished my school. So yeah. yeah. It's very taboo in, here in America to not finish school. But in Australia? Yeah, too, for some reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you surf? I hate surfing because I'm scared of sharks. I, you know, recently the sharks have been so active. And, yep. you know, me and my husband love to surf. And I'm like, I... Yeah, no. And, yeah, I don't. I hate sharks. And from Australia, there's a lot of them. Lot of them. So I don't do so <laughs> I did a Vogue story and the Vogue I did a Vogue story and they're like you have to surf in it and I go well don't want to do the Vogue I'm okay <laughs> yeah and they're like I got the job anyway they pushed they put me ahead for the job and I got it and it's one of like the best stories I've ever had <laughs> but I was, was so excuse my langu- language I was so shit scared I was like oh my god I was in, in the, the water that day actually there was a shark sighting they didn't tell me Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, because I knew how scared I was of sharks. And um I was in the water at five AM. Oh, it was the worst. But one of the most beautiful stories at That's least. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do great. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, true. Yes, it is true actually. Usually it's morning or, or it's evening. It's feeding time. Mm-hmm. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, New York was my start and I, my big break, is that your next question or I'm just going into it? So, yeah. Yeah, go into it. Yeah, sure. Um, so when I, for me, I was modeling and I was doing a lot of commercial work and I was told I couldn't do high fashion as well. And that was what bothered me as well. I was too sexy and Commercial's great though, Commercial as you know. Commercial's good, yeah. You, it makes money. you money. And it's so annoying but because you're just like, you want one thing but you want the other as well. What kind of clients, like for, for you know, for people who watch and who are like actually in fashion, what clients did you work for? So when I first started, I was doing like Target, Coles, JCPenney, but I was doing like swimwear and so lingerie. Mm-hmm. But also, as you know, and if people watching, when you do swimwear, it doubles your pay as well because mm-hmm. not every girl – is a lingerie swimwear model and it's just you know it's like luck of the prize I guess Mm -hmm. if you have it but um and I didn't think I had it I didn't think I was going to be a lingerie swimwear model at all I was like I don't think I have the body for it and they're like no you do I was like I do I was like okay well um and it was great um so I did JCPenney, Coles, Target and then beauty campaigns Mm -hmm. like for Sephora or you know here and there. Um, Macy's, I would go to Macy's and shoot like online catalogs every day. It was like great like, bread and butter money. But I couldn't do high fashion. I was told it's just not going to happen for me. And again, at that time, it was more of your look. Like it was yeah. like it was just this is what they wanted. For me, it was so hard. Um, and I wasn't tall enough for Fashion Week because I was 5'9". And... I think, and I kept going to Victoria's Secret as well because it's like my agent's like, what do you want to do? I was like, I really want to do Victoria's Like I, I would love to do Victoria's Secret. I think I remember how much you wanted it too. Yeah. You, know, like, you were like, we all knew that you're actually going to do it, you know? At some yeah. Point. <laughs> it's like, it's got to happen someday. No. But it was, um, yeah, I, I kept going. Uh, I think it was my third time that I was going. And I think I just turned 21 or no, 20. Sorry. And as a woman, your body, you know, sometimes like 20, 21, 22, it depends, but like my body just changed. Like I slimmed out my face. I think I lost all like my baby, the baby that was on me and my body changed again. I came in more into like a woman and I went for the casting and 
I, as you know, and for Victoria's Secret, you get callbacks. And did you, when did you cast for your Victoria's Secret? Did you do VS? Oh, yes, it's did. a whole another story. Like, oh, really? I'm do we have so time? close with them, like with Victoria's Secret, like yeah. with Ed and like all the people. Yeah. And uh, it's actually a funny story. Uh, I got confirmed for the show. Yeah. What? Yes. Stop. I, I got confirmed for the show. Yeah. Uh, for pink section. Mm. So that was this bubbly, cute little blonde. And <laughs> uh, they wanted me to do all the looks, right? So I was like going there to do looks. And I remember this one day, it was like a rainy day. I show up all happy and stuff. And, uh, you know, the seamstress were like uh, doing the clothes on me. And I'm like standing there. And then sometimes like some people will come in or talk. It seemed like a good day. Mm. I got home and my agent calls me and says to me that uh, they canceled me. No. <gasps> and I cannot begin to tell you guys. I was the... so devastated. Yeah. Broken. And I was at that time, I think I was about 20. Mm. And uh, I was destroyed. To be honest. Yeah. Can you tell us why? So or I asked what my the agent reason they gave you. Yeah. At that time, Ali was my agent, and he uh, he basically said that they thought I don't have energy enough. Enough energy. No, oh. I'm not like positive enough, to, like the energy. And I was like, but I'm doing looks with seamstress in a room. I don't have to like walk all the time. I'm just standing there. And I thought we all had good conversation. And I never heard this about me that I don't have energy because mm. I'm always like energetic on a set and. Um, it was really a um, low blow for me, for sure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but you know what? Like, greater things come out. Like, we all stayed friends. And, you know, who knows what was the real reason? I think there's it's a bigger story behind, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I eventually um, signed with La Senza. Yeah. The contract. We shot years. together for La Senza. Yeah. 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 One time. Yeah. Yeah. At the very beginning. Yeah. And uh, that's that so was crazy. that was me. Yeah, yeah. I have that picture on like Facebook of us. Oh my god, I have to, I have to see it. Yeah, after. yeah. Um, but and and so basically, Victoria's Secret is owned by Limited, the same as La Senza. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like still talk to same people. I would go to conferences in Ohio, and it was Victoria's Secret and La Senza. So you had too. enough energy for La Senza, but not for Vic for for Pink. There you go. <laughs> Okay. That owned by the same company, by the way. Yeah. And I remember, like, you and the sense of, like, it's very, you have to play it up. It's very sexy, very, like, very playful. I, like, I, I was that. seeing on set, I'm like, wow, she can, she's a force. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're amazing on all of them. That's, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Yeah, you're amazing. You definitely need energy. So there. easy to shoot. It was just like, oh, we had such a good time. You're so easy to shoot with. Yeah. I think we shot with Greg Cadell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not easy to shoot with. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, you are. <laughs> we never walk together. You I'm yeah, together? you're okay. easy as well. You're just, <laughs> you know, you're beautiful. Like it's just her. Like they love you for oh, on the on the VS runway. No, they do. They do. They do. Those I remember. Fun, but can you please like tell us? Oh, the story. Yeah, yeah come on. Finish the story. Yeah, I was, sorry, I'm so sorry. interested in your story. Um. So I um. So I was waiting for the callback and at this time I haven't done anything bigger than just catalog work and I was like I was really praying I was like I need my I need something to change in my modeling career I need to go to the next step I need something to change and I uh it was Halloween Halloween night it's always the Halloween it was always Halloween night I think that's really good because if you don't get it you can just you just, drink get your, up. <laughs> you can just drink your sorrows away you like oh it, well just, yeah. <laughs> and it happened um so it was Halloween night I was getting ready to go out and um uh, waiting for a friend call so uh I think I'm not sure my agent called me or I called in he called me and I said oh was there any feedback from Vic Victoria's Secret and he goes no, unfortunately. And I was what? like, oh, okay. And I just like in my, in my being, I was like, oh, there's that nothing's going to change. And I was so upset and I was like, oh, okay. And I just thought like, I'm just going to have to try again next year or whatever it is. And then, and he goes, but the good news is you have like Coles next week, JCPenney. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, and I was like, it's money. Like I can't be mad at that. But I was just like, I want to do something bigger, but in my that's what was going through my head. Um, but how did the casting go? Because, you know, we've all been on that casting and it's, it is 
the most like scariest, like nerve wracking, like oh my gosh. time. And it's only three, three seconds of your life. The build up to getting your hair done and your makeup and all that. And then it's five seconds mm-hmm. and you're like, and then you're replaying like, how did I do? What did I do? Did, did they like me? What was like, you're trying to find signs with all of it. It's hard. It's, there's so many beautiful girls and it's like, and so many of them that cast for this show and everyone look amazing for the show yeah so works out like three months in advance yeah. <laughs> but those castings they're the hallways filled up with girls and you walk in and you're like oh my god yeah your heart How just goes are they gonna see me through all yeah the beauty around, all this right? beauty i was yeah. like oh my gosh and um yeah and for me because i was like i'm going up against really established beautiful models that like i feel like oh they're gonna have an upper hand because they've shot vogue this month for the cover of Harper's Bazaar or they walked in like the Prada and whatever it may be and so I was like I don't think I don't know it's it's very hard for me to get a chance so my agent was like but um it goes Friday I need you to go to another casting I'll go oh okay uh no so not tomorrow the next day I go you have to go for a car um a casting and I'll go oh okay what's it for and he goes you have to go um fit for the Victoria's Secret fashion show and I go what and he goes, you got the show. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I go, I got confirmed. And he goes, I know. And I just was like, I screamed. And I was like, I didn't he know to cry. Job, he it? played a joke. And and he goes, and I'm like, did I get pink or Victoria? And he goes, you got Victoria's Secret. <gasps> yeah. And I go, oh, my God. And I, um, so it was obviously so aesthetic. It was just like the biggest dream and the most, the thing that I was working hardest towards yeah. was happening. Mm-hmm. And I just saw in that moment, like, my whole life is going to change after oh. that because it you're, it does, that show change yes. girls' careers and that's why a lot of us want to do it. But it's, I think at the time it, you have to have, like, a whole list of things to be on that show. It's about personality and, like, walk and whatever it is. And I was very diverse as well. I think that really helped for once in my, like in my modeling career, because I was so diverse, I was being celebrated again because of my background. So my mom called me because my mom checks in with me every day, like I was saying. And um, she goes, have you heard anything about Victoria's Secret? And I go, no, I didn't. I didn't hear anything. And I was like playing a trick on her. And she was like, Shanina, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, you know what? You, you've done so well. You work so hard. She goes, you're just going to do it again and you'll try it. And I was like, yeah. And then I go, no, I'm kidding. I got the show. And she goes, what? And she started crying. My mom just started, I know I'm crying too. My mom started, I'm just crying on this podcast. Really. My mom started, I always cry when I do the story because it's like, I, um, my mom started crying on the phone and she's like, I'm so proud of you because she knew how hard I worked for it. But she knew that. Yeah. And she just knew like every time you go into that casting and you don't get it and you know, it's just like it breaks you. But she goes, she was so proud of me. And so I flew my mom for for the show, show, my first show. And my mom sat. You know what was really funny? Her seat was row two. No. Yeah. Row two, seat 11. That's my birthday. (gasps) Yeah. So we kept the card. They gave her the seat, row two, seat 11. No way. And, um, yeah, I always cry with that because my mom is my rock. Like, she's the biggest my supporter of my career. But she goes through the emotions with you. And obviously, being mums, you know, like, you go, you're going to go through life. the emotions for your child. You just mm-hmm. will do anything to, like, make them happy or take their pain away, you know. So, um, yeah, no, it changed my career. Um, I remember going to the car, uh, the rehearse, the what rehearsals. Was that day? I'm sorry. 2011. Okay. Um, and it's funny because 11 is my favorite number. Yeah. Uh, I have it tattooed on here. So it was 11, and then your seat was 11 too. And it was November. The show is always in November. It was 11, 11. Yeah. So it was, it was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. It was really, really beautiful. Um, and I really loved the show. I loved it because it was a place, um where in the fashion industry for like every other show you're just like a coat hanger pretty much you you know our job is to showcase clothes but this show was where we could show our personality as an individual and yeah and just be like smile and dance and hang out with your girlfriends backstage because we are so busy 
mm-hmm. and you come together and chat and hang out and whatever it may be. And at the time I didn't really, I was so young, I didn't, I didn't really work out. I think I did like 50, 100 squats and like a little, little ab workout and I was like, I was ready for the runaway and was, mm-hmm. that was it. And then as time progressed because – your body does change when you become a woman. You have to work out more. And, and it gets more serious. And it more gets competitive. More, more competitive, more serious. And, yeah, with age, I was like, okay, I have to do take three months of my time to be in the gym and work out. It is and, three months. It's always a yeah. start, like, so much in advance. It's, was it hard to stay on that schedule? Do you have, like, some kind of schedule three months prior to that, like the workout or what you were eating? And- I was... I was a soldier. If I was, I was training like an athlete. I'm gonna say the truth. Yeah, no, I was training like an athlete. Mm-hmm. Like that, I was. I trained like an athlete. Like I was going for like a gold medal at the Olympics. Mm-hmm. I made sure I was. And you saw we worked out during this time together we as together. well. Yeah, we did a, a lot. Years. Like I did six a.m. classes, like a uh, cycling class, and then breakfast. I had like a you know I stuck to a diet, but you know, like hot water and lemon and (laughs) an egg egg and uh you know peanut butter and um fish like clean fish and vegetables spinach spinach. and then I went for my second workout for the day and um and then every day I did it you know and then I learned like oh I need to rest yeah I need to give my body a rest like working out every day it doesn't work for your body you need to actually giving your body a rest and peace actually is what benefits your body and not putting stress on it. If I go, if I could go back in time now and be like, I would have done a different workout. Completely. Different. Completely. I wouldn't have stressed so much. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I know now, I would have worked out because it makes me feel good. I know what works for my body now, um, in regards to workouts because not what you do for your workout for your body, what you do for a workout for your body works for you, but not for everybody else. So. Pilates. Yeah, what dark what, what does work for you? For me, Pilates is I love Pilates. And then um like if I could do like a bit of weight training here and there. I, I should be doing more weight training, but I just don't I'm busy mom. I'm a busy mom and don't have time for you it. Baby to, to oh he's so heavy. <laughs> yeah. He looks but big. He's big boy. Yeah, he's so big. But um yeah, Pilates work for me and I just wouldn't put that stress on myself so much. But um you know, it's a job at the end of the day. Like, yeah, I had to do it to, you know, to. But I also wanted to do it because I wanted to look and feel my best when I was. Of course, because bright you're lights on. <laughs> you're in lingerie, and mm-hmm. you know everyone's staring at you as you walk past, and you're going to be on television to the whole entire world. So I wanted to look and feel mm-hmm. my best. But um, yeah. So I did a uh, good five shows with Victoria's. Oh Europe. wow, you did a lot. Yeah, I did a good, good amount. Was, One after the next, right? No, no. No, that's another story. <laughs> no, some some years I, I I wasn't right for the show, so that was really hard too. Because, because um, there was there was a transition um within Victoria's Secret, and I um maybe like I wasn't. I think we went for like a really editorial look, and again. Sometimes I just don't fit into yeah. the the narrative yeah. of being very high fashion, so I didn't get it. And maybe I put on a little bit more weight, um, and I wasn't fit. I think I was going through like a really hard time, also in like my personal life. And I think when I went to a casting, I was like, I look back, I was like, yeah, that timing wasn't right for like, me. Like no wonder they didn't get. Yeah, it. no wonder I didn't yeah. get it. It didn't make sense, and they really wanted me for the show. Yeah, and they're like, but sure. it's just not. And I was like, you know what? I get it. Yeah. Um, and then some one year I was like, I don't get it. Why? Why did this happen? You looked great, and it I looked never happened. At, so good. I looked great. I remember there was one year they took, like obviously everyone looks different, but like the two girls that are like so high fashion, so skinny, they had no boobies, no like shapes, and like I'm not talking down to anyone, but like yeah. Victoria's Secret for me always were like this goddess. Yeah. And now it changed, anyways, but. This one year, they took like super like runway goals, and I'm like, why? <laughs> why yeah, does it work, you know. But yeah, I think the what um, is great about VS, and even what they're you know where they are today, they're finding it is what is great. I, I just shot for them in January. I did a oh, wow. campaign for them. It's like being 
like finding like the goddess and woman like making you feel confident right. and mm-hmm. that's what I loved about it, like, having the personality right. and that's what is really great about like VS that so they had true. those women that we look up to um and that you wanted to like just be inspired by definitely until today like we, if we look back on even the old shows you're like oh my gosh I would I want to look like that <laughs> I know I, I literally have my picture from V as this one year that I looked insane when I worked out with Justin and I'm like can I just look like that? yeah can I be? but you can't be that every day I think that's the no. great story to talk about too it's like what I look like on the VS runway it's and our trainers will say that you you're not gonna be that every day no. you can't it's just physically impossible and it's so much stress on your body and you know looking like a like you have a blow dry and like all this makeup mm-hmm. every day it's just not you know it's not gonna happen it's okay it's a it's a fantasy but it's also like like every other day on like on a Friday night you're gonna dress up and you know you want to look and feel your best or if you have a you know an amazing holiday coming up and you're like you know what's bikini season I want to look and feel great and I've got to take got to take Instagram pictures whatever it may be it's just is to push it a little yeah to push it a little bit but um yeah no it's great I had a great time I loved it for the like for the most part yeah but um it definitely changed my career and I'm very if I look back I'm very grateful for that because it did open so many doors and because of that I started doing high fashion I mean I remember you did Chanel runways after that I my first my first show in Paris was Chanel. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you that's major. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> I remember I had to go over there fit to confirm. Um, oh, yeah, fit to confirm. And I met Karl Lagerfeld. And yeah, I, I, I booked Chanel. It was my first like big show, like Fashion Week show as well. What other shows was like, oh, yeah, this is great that I did that. Now looking back. Um, so after that, I did the whole Fashion Week circuit. I did... Um, Oscar de la Renta, Jason Wu, I did Tom Ford, Stella McCartney. Um, who else did I do? I did a few others. I did a lot. But um, those are on the top of my head. And then I like you know, I went and went back for like Tom Ford a second. I did two seasons with Tom Ford. So it, yeah, I did I did really, really well. It opened up a lot, uh, a lot of doors for me. Um Beautiful. casting directors and all yeah, that. Yeah, they all knew after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then Rob- Roberta Cavalli, De Blue Marine and Milan. I think we did that show together yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it funny how when you first got to New York, all these people were telling you no. And then yeah. you do like one thing and then everyone's like, Oh, she's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think that for me I like the hardship and I don't actually probably today, like it's really hard, but the idea of someone telling me no it's like pushes you to challenge like to challenge yourself and but it's also a lesson with like don't you can't listen to other people what matters in the end is you believing in yourself and keep trying because if you believe in it it's going to happen and did I think that I was going to be 32 after having a baby and shoot a Victoria's Secret campaign and like I was like, no, and it just happened, and it was like four months postpartum, and I was like, wow. oh my god, I was like, I, I didn't think that would ever happen, but I was like, it would be great if it did, and it did, so like, you know, it's, the universe works in mysterious ways, but if you believe in yourself through all of it, and there's a lot of tears that come with it, wow. I cried a lot through my job, I've, and I'm sure you've dealt with it, like, oh yeah. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Like I've walked into castings and they're like, you're not meant to be here. I'll say, oh, but it was my agency told me I was meant to be here. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no. And I've been, you know, I was 21. I was told I was fat and my hips were too big. And Ridiculous. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I remember because it happened to me too. Like, yeah. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? You have to have a real, you have to have a really strong like backbone yeah. to like, to do yeah, because some of that stuff gets to you when they when they judge you so much and then you start questioning yourself and then you're like oh am I really am I really that big but now when I look at my pictures at that age I'm like I was so skinny I like was so thin I was it's crazy and I look back at it and I was like wow my skin was great you know like I you know and, you know, as we age, we're like, oh, I look old. But then I look back, like, I was like, I look so young. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, what was I worried about? <laughs> right? I'm just like, live in the moment. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's tough, that industry. Yeah. 
no, it's it was very hard, but yeah, a lot of hardships, but it definitely makes you stronger. It does. Yeah. It does. And you made it. Yeah, and having it's really important, I think, with any job that you do have in this and with anything you deal with, it's really important to have a strong community of like love and support. support. Yeah. yeah. And my mum was that. And like and finding the right... life together too, you know, because like a lot of girls, sorry to interrupt you, but I feel like a lot of girls just get lost things are like putting or this or that. But like, I feel like if you keep going and you keep it strong and you keep it together, you know, yes, keep yeah. your people next to you who support you, it does help. There's been so many times when I wanted to quit modeling. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, this is not working out. And it's like, uh, I'm going to quit. What kept you going? What do you think at that moment where you're like, okay, I'm going back? What was that one thing that you like made you go forward? I'm a huge believer in like spiritual, like the universe. I believe I think it made me so uncomfortable and like nothing happening because it needed me to change something or like gain strength in or like see be grateful for something that maybe or like a plan that was like it's just not right now it's coming it's in a different way yeah mm -hmm. like the one year that I wanted to quit and it was nothing happening I remember like I was like oh I think the year before I didn't even get Victoria's Secret as well and I was like this is uh, like I just this is not happening for me this is not gonna work and then um I got I booked VS that year and then I booked a movie And then I was, um, yeah, like I did something for the Victoria Music. I was a presenter at the VMAs and oh, wow. all these things just like flooded into the end of the year. And I was like, maybe it was like something just like, no, just keep keep going, Sometimes keep doing what you're doing. Something else better happens yes. than you expected. Yeah. 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 So, um, and it just comes in waves as well. I think. Like anything in life. I think there's a great story as well and like a good journey where it's like you don't like rise and then come down. It's the wave and the mm -hmm. journey and like learning. Um, and I think the progress and the journey, I've learned so much of like what I wanted to do for now as well, like moving into like business and um, like having my own business. I just I think there was a timing and a place for all of that as well. Well, do you want to tell us more a little bit about <laughs> it? That was our yeah. next question, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. You know, during pandemic, you did all your uh, Wellness Wednesdays, right? Yes. It's It was all about the skincare and, you know, all that kind of wellness things. And then, yeah, just tell us about your line, your career trip. We, like, want to know all about it. <laughs> of course. I have always been passionate about skincare and obviously within our work um, and my work, um, taking care of yourself is really important and I've learned a lot about Um, just in general, like going to all your spa treatments and making sure you look great in front of the camera, what works. And I actually had, I don't think the best skin going through my 20s. Like I was always breaking out in my T-zone area and hormones and I had really bad breakouts and I was getting really, really frustrated. And I think it was like near the end of my 20s, I found something that was working well for me and I just gained the best skin I figured it out like I figured out a formula that was working um and within that also taking care of skin is not always about creams and serums I learned that it's all about self-care and taking your care of yourself from within like your gut health is so important for your skin um drinking water and your diet is really important your hormones have a huge play on how your skin is so with all of that I found out what works for me and I love the idea of helping others to take care of themselves and also like take care of their skin because like when you go into a job a meeting or whatever you do it's like face first it's your skin that you know and it's the thing that you're going to wear for the for the rest of your life as well um and everyone wants to look their best and age gracefully and feel that feel good about themselves so I believe that Korean skincare is very advanced with their technology and formula and I've learned a lot about it and I wanted to work in um, Korean skincare because if I wanted to get, I believe in, if you want to have the best skincare, it needs to come from Korea. They just have the best formula in a very natural approach. So um, I decided to work with Korean skincare labs to manufacture what 
will be hopefully next year my skincare line um will come out next year so we can't wait is that's it exciting line or um it's like some product or what it's some it? products all i can okay. say i'm not coming out with a full line okay. um some products but um yeah it will come out next year i made a trip to go to seoul korea because i the time that i wanted to start all of this as well and then the pandemic happened so i couldn't go to to, to mm. seoul or japan and then um yeah the covid stopped all travel and it was very very hard and difficult to travel so i i, I just really wanted to make that trip because i thought it was important like to learn about Korean skincare, you have to go to Seoul, even though I know it's really good. I just, I wanted to get there. So I made that trip this year, finally. It looked so fun. How it was, was it? It was amazing. I love it there. Um, everything is like all the ingredients I have over there is just so advanced and so natural. And I, um, you get the best skincare, like, and it's so cheap as well. Like you, you can buy all the skincare masks you want. It's just that you have everything. How much stuff did you bring back home? Oh, a lot. <laughs> they have this amazing. They have this amazing product that's really popular right now. It's called um, eye cream for your face. What? Eye cream for your face. Does it lift your? So like things that you use for your eye cream, but it's for mm-hmm. your face. So I've been using it. Like I'm out of it now, but like been using it every day. It's so amazing. Um, they do a lot of bleach masks that's what I remember from living in Japan like yeah all the brightening it's all about brightening for them it's a very I think it's like very cultural yeah um, beauty uh, regimen that they have to stand by for like be what they consider beauty yeah um, is like light fair skin so yeah they probably they have a lot of um, options to do all of that for me well just in general my best tip for skincare is protect yourself from the sun because that's what's if you don't protect your skin from the sun you will age and you'll get dark spots and you'll see the wrinkles um so sunscreen every day even when you're not doing much not being exposed too much to sun right yeah um so for example you you're exposed to most a lot of sun when you're in the air as well so if you're in the airplane yeah stop it so if that person next to you has the the um the window up there without the shade you're getting exposed to like you're burning your skin and pilots that's like shocking for me yeah pilots (laughs) who get exposed to sun in the when you're up in the air it's like going into a sunbed what yeah I mean, it makes sense. Imagine you're on a plane, you're so close to the sun. Yeah, the UV rays, yeah, it's very... So you want to, you know, make sure you're taking care of your skin even when you're um, on the airplane, like misting, hydrating, because your skin becomes really dehydrated, Um, mask, and then shade down, but then mist as much as you can and moisturize your skin because your skin gets dehydrated. And mostly women and even men, like women think this they they have wrinkles but usually most of the time it's just dehydration on their skin yeah you know so i live in uh miami now and yeah. i was spending time in colorado the moment i land in miami all my wrinkles disappear it's because the it's humidity so there. yeah like, yeah I live here forever yeah it's so okay. beautiful like your skin is yeah. amazing there so mm-hmm. even if you have very like oily skin it's um it's good to like still hydrate your skin like there people think that you you shouldn't dry it out but it's really important to like moisturize um and then obviously with dry skin i could go on for days but like yeah (laughs) really good to like rich hydration like all the time and do you want to share with us what's the name of your skincare brand or it's in a way i can't yet okay but um the giveaway is that it is um from it's korean skincare so Mm-hmm. um i'll be happy to share very soon if not the start of next we can't year wait. yes i'll give you samples yeah you're my top girls don't worry <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> no i'm very very excited about it um yeah and i'm excited just to like help people with their mm-hmm. skin as well yeah yeah i love I mean, it one pimple stresses me out i can't <laughs> i'm like if i have pimple here like ruins my day and you shouldn't yeah. pick at your skin i'm like that's a hard one. Yeah. Right? Well, if you pick at your skin, that's how you get more pimples. Because it like spreads. It spreads. You, mm. your, well, one, you're opening your skin like by popping it. And you're opening the pores. More bacteria goes in, and then you're using your fingers, and it creates more breakouts. 
So it's the worst, but the best thing if you have inflammation on your skin, like it's coming to the surface, it's like it's the worst. You try to get it to the surface where it's white and like don't touch it as much as you can. And it's like... But if you need to do it, like do it, like have a dermatologist touch it or like do it in the lightest way and then put like... um and ice it because for information ice is like your, your best friend for the information oh, really? oh mm -hmm. wow yeah especially for under the skin i'll try next mm -hmm. um breakouts have you ever tried there's this machine i don't know what's it called it kind of like it's kind of like electricity like if you have a breakout you kind of like yeah zap it's it. like zap it the yeah. zaps the bacteria i've done that too what do you think of that it's great i think it's like for everyone that has skin because also like the melon on your skin for skin tones you have to be really careful so i'm definitely like no you know, science expert, but you definitely <laughs> want to see a dermatologist to yeah. like make sure you can do those things. But um, it's great because I've had that happen to me before. Actually, when I was um, when I was going through a divorce, my skin was at its worst. It's so yes. funny you say that because I had exactly the same thing. Yeah, in my wow. Area. Yeah, it's stress, and it was at my worst. I had to cancel jobs. I didn't want to be any. My confidence was at all time low. I was getting under the skin breakouts and it just would not go away. Like it was really, if I look back on the pictures, I was like, oh my God, and I'll try to cover up makeup. And yeah, it was, it was terrible. Like I think I have like scars a little bit from it too. And like here, but I had breakouts all across from here. And it's not until I got rid of the stress as well and that was like making a decision with my relationship and um and I was like drinking a lot because it's like you know when you're going through breakups you like going out and drinking like so getting like healthy and taking care of myself my gut health and all that and until I got to that place and like made a decision mm -hmm. and then I was going to facials as well but I did the zapping as well and that helped with my skin and got rid of the bacteria I feel like that time when I was going through a divorce, it was exactly the same time for me. Like when I started having these crazy breakouts and like you said, it's all stress and build up and it impacted my work too. I yeah. feel like I wasn't confident. Was, it was just like really your self-esteem is so down and yeah. you don't live that healthiest lifestyle at that moment. Um, and that's why I tried out that even that electricity thing. Like yeah. I was like experimenting, trying things, but it only took while to realize where it's actually coming from and it's all from inside it's all it this stress anxiety and yeah like you i had to fix that first so that it would show in my skin because it was really bad so yeah i i hear you it's yeah. it's funny how it's isn't it crazy that how stress plays a huge role in everything on, in everything yeah. on our body mm -hmm. and it causes so many issues totally yeah and especially inflammation on our body it's really really important to like take care of ourselves and be at peace with ourselves because you meditation. do meditation meditation i was told today before i came here i need to meditate more <laughs> so yes i was like no i need to i was like Fine, all right so like you need to meditate more i'm like okay i'm mm -hmm. going to meditate more it's gonna get me better i'm going mm -hmm. to do it yeah. making time it's hard for moms you're like mm -hmm. we're not gonna meditate mm -hmm. baby's up at you know this and you time feel guilty even though like yeah if you can find time you still feel guilty and you're like no i have to be at home with a baby yeah. yeah but being your best self and taking the time for yourself means your baby like your child is yeah, gonna be at its mom. best because you're happy and, and energy and infectious and you're like sleep is so important. I know like mom, we don't get a lot of sleep, but like taking the time to like, I was like, I'm going to sleep train because I need to sleep because I want to be my the best for my, my little one's eye. So I can take him out for the day and feel good about myself. Cause if I don't have sleep, I'm like, Oh, short, tired, don't want to do anything. It's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-care. Self-care. Yeah, totally. Sure. Well, speaking of divorce that we mentioned before a little bit, <laughs> let's go back in memory line. Well, speaking of divorce, yes. Well, we know that you got married. I'm smiling and... away through it. What's that? <laughs> smiling away through it. Yeah, right. uh -huh. uh, yeah, so in 2018, you got married. Mm -hmm. 2019, you got divorced. I think so, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So I know it was like a very crazy time for you, I'm sure. And you went through lots of ups and downs. And like we talked, it was so many downs. But mm. I'm like really curious, what did you learn from the whole experience? Um, for me, I learned a lot about myself um, and what I would like in the future for a future relationship. I think um, 
I think I was so young and I had a lot to learn about myself and what I shouldn't should and shouldn't deal with in a relationship um what I'm deserving of and just overall like what works for me in a relationship like what was working for me probably wasn't working for my partner and and was functional for him and what I was asking for um and I can look I didn't think it was a lot at the time I I'm very easy I'm very busy person <laughs> and I'm always on the go so um love languages I don't know if anyone believes in that but like which one is yours quality time is so important for me mm -hmm. so like um overall like I again I'm very busy I travel but like making the time and quality time is just so important especially um in our world <laughs> of being busy and running around and travel um I needed that and so I learned a lot and um, I just, yeah, it wasn't, and my, my ex-husband would agree. We just weren't right for each other. We, we wanted different things. And he, I don't think he was ready to make that decision to be married yet. Um, so that was a lesson that we had to, you know, mm -hmm. that he had to learn as well. Was it hard to make that step, the realization, that moment when you're like, okay, this is not working out, right? Because when you get married, you, you think it's for the rest of your life. Oh, so yeah. It's a big decision. We don't get married to get divorced. We get married because we see the future and we want to have a long, happy life with our partner. And I think for me, that realization, oh, my gosh, yeah, it was so painful and upsetting. Um, I was at an all-time low um, because, of course, I, like, I loved my, my ex-husband very dearly. But um, I don't think we were best friends, and he'll agree to, like, we weren't best friends. And I was like, that broke me as well. And that's what, something I had to learn through that as well. Like, we got along, but we weren't best, best friends. But I think I learned from that from him. And so going, I was like, I need to, like, really, you know, meet my best friend or get to mm -hmm. know somebody. I also think I have a bit of, I don't know if with my job and a bit of trauma, I think coming into relationships, I get – very worried about the idea that if a partner, a man is coming into my life, are they dating me for me or because of who I am in this world of yeah. celebrity likeness or I'm Shanina Shaikh? I was like, I really want you to just get to know me and be with me mm -hmm. because of who I who I am. Like totally not because of the glamour the, the Victoria's line. Secret yeah. Shanina Shaikh. Um, so it's you... a bit of trauma with that too. Yeah, is there anything you would change looking back? Um, probably not got married. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my answer. <laughs> uh, not get married. <laughs> I can sit back and laugh about it now. Um, yeah, That's a good answer. No, not got married. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have got married. Shanina, do you know that after your wedding, I could I had a great wedding, though. I, I had, had a, a great wedding. I couldn't fly for two days because I was throwing up in the bathroom. <laughs> That's how much fun I had. No, there. everybody was saying, like, Shanina, I must say, like, you know, it didn't work out. Um, great and even my, my ex-husband would agree. We had a, a most beautiful, amazing wedding. Um, it was fun, for sure. It was very fun. Oh Everyone was like, gosh. it was the most fun at a wedding. I think that that resembles who I am as well. Like, I didn't want like a, you know, sit, it was a sit down dinner, but like, just like, was okay, a, sit down? A, sched, a schedule, like with everything, like this yeah. person do. And I was like, you know what, we finished, let's dance. And then we'll do, you know, we have to eat and then we'll drink and then like go to the dance floor. We just want to party. And like, I just wanted mm -hmm. to have a celebration, like party and like have moments where to understand that it was really special. And it's actually, this is really funny. And a funny I can, a story I can bring up. So when we were doing uh, speeches, um, no, actually before this, I, we had to choose a wedding date and I'm really big with numbers as well. Like uh, um, I connect with numbers and I go, what number would I like to get married on? Like this is really important for me. So I got married in April and that's when I met my ex-husband in that month and I said that would be really like special to do it in the month that we met. And I said, what about 28th of April? I was like, I love the number two. It's in my birthday. It's an even number. And eight is in infinity. It's never ending. So it's like full life. That's what I loved. And I was like, okay, 28. So I I was talking to my mom. I needed my birth certificate from her for something for a job or whatever it may be. And I looked at my birth certificate. I was on the plane. 
I looked at my birth certificate. My mom and dad got married on the 28th of April, Stop 1990. It. Yeah, I didn't know. What? I chose the wedding date of my mom and dad. So when I, I got married. That's ma- why it didn't work out? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I got married on. Dad, mom and dad. No, but I got married like. When did I get married? I was like 20. And I got married on the when I was 28. So 28 years later, I got married on the same date that my mom chose to get it's married. Crazy. It's wild. Yeah. And yeah. And I came, I was conceived on my mom's wedding night too. So You were? Aww. Yeah. yeah. Special date. It's very eerie. But yeah, very funny. But uh, yeah. No, I, um, it was a great, there was nothing hard. I, like I have a great relationship with my ex-husband um, today. Like um, it's you know it's neutral if we see each other in passing say hi mm-hmm. and no, there's no bad blood there civilized. we're that's civilized good. and it worked out um and good. yeah I think it's that's not taboo it's just my journey like um I think the question is is like would I get married again or does has it you know turned me off to get married at first I don't think I want to get married um I will say I have a child now and I think that is a much more steady commitment sure. as well. That's a lo- like a long life commitment. That's going to be my partner for life now, you know. But um, I would love to get married again another day if I could and have that commitment and, you know, have a partner for life. But I'm not, I'm not pressured to do it anymore. Yeah, you already done it. And I did it. It's together. more important for the foundation and really get right. to know that person and make sure that, you know, that they are that person. So, yeah, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, um, no, yeah, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. So, I don't know. Tell us about Matthew. I personally never met him. Yeah, you haven't. <laughs> I know nothing about him. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys kind of, which I can relate, you guys kind of had child quickly, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was planned, unplanned. You mm-hmm. want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. Um, but tell us how you met at least. Yeah, Where I... um. Because all of you know about all my history as well, especially you. I you know think, everything, I, I my really dating know. history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so weird. I um, I met Matthew in the pan- during the pandemic in 2020, um, which is really weird. I was actually in London in the UK during the pandemic. I got stuck outside of um, my home in the US. I couldn't come back in. Um, so I was in London and I love London, which was great. And it was a setup, actually. So I, in the place, the place that I was in during this time of my life, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I was going through a divorce, or was just got divorced, and still very fresh. And I just broke up from like, an, you know, another relationship, and it wasn't serious. But it was like I was going through ground zero. I was at ground zero, I and I also you were in a hotel room filming your things, and I was like, Shanina, yeah. Is- and not an yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> everything was just shifting in my life. I got a new apartment while I was over there. So um, I was just really down and I was, in, I was just like, whatever happens, happens. And then I think on Matthew's end, and he told me this later on after we met, he saw a picture of me as um, from a girlfriend of mine. And he, I guess he said to his friends, I, I think I want a girlfriend for the first time, like a serious relationship I want a girlfriend for the first time in a long time I mean you know or the first time in my life I guess <laughs> and so my girlfriend showed a bunch of pictures of girls <laughs> to him and <laughs> she did so a casting romantic. yeah he did a casting <laughs> and she's like what about this and he showed a picture of me like my Instagram and I was like I wouldn't have not shown my picture like I was probably not in the best place in my life it was like so weird you would show me but that's okay um and I guess he was like wow, you, you know her? Like, this is a girl you know, I guess. And they're like, yeah, she's here in London. And it was, I think it was the first night he got back into London or whatever it may be. I went out with her and I didn't know what was going on. And it was... They didn't tell you. They didn't tell me what was going on. They were just like, oh, you know, you should meet so-and-so. Like, like, he's coming. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. And at the end of the night, I wanted to go home it was very late and they're like oh no please can you just come to this last spot we're gonna go I was like no it's like 4 30 in the morning um, it's time for us to go home and they were really pushy about me staying to go to this next spot and I go oh okay and 
I decided they're like just stay for an hour if you don't like it I'll, I'll get you a taxi to go home I was like all right that's fine all right deal go there get to the door and it's Matthew who opens it and it's just him and there's no one else there's no party there's nothing going on and I'll go, <laughs> what? I was like I, and in my head I'm like what is going on and so that's where we first met I didn't understand what's going on but 4.30 in the morning, sat there chatting and <laughs> so weird. Um, but I I had, uh, I'm very like, uh, I'm very shy and I'm very cautious about my space, but I was very felt kind of relaxed with him. And I liked, he was, when I was speaking to him, he was asking me questions. He was, he comes, he's very diverse as well. His mom's uh, Persian Armenian and his dad's, oh, wow. his dad's from Nigeria so I, we connect on that. And then also it was really weird. I'm like, he asked me where I was from. I'm like, I'm from Australia, but I live in Los Angeles. He goes, I live in Los Angeles as well. I go, what are the odds that we're both here in London and we both live in Los Angeles? Like, what, what are you doing here? Why am I here? It's like, it was really weird. He was in the music industry. I was very afraid of that because of mm. my past relationship. But um, Matthew's, um, he's a label manager, so he owns the record label with his business partner. So he's in the background scene a little bit. So I was like, oh, that's cool. So better, mm-hmm. better. The artist. I love music as well, so I think I naturally gravitate towards people in like the creative side of mm-hmm. the industry. And I, again, I love music. Um, so that was great. And then I got up and left. <laughs> After that. Didn't swap numbers, anything like this. He walked me out, but we didn't have any contact after like you didn't kiss no no i don't no i didn't even know him i was like he didn't even ask your number no no he, he woke me out but he was playing hard to get no i don't know i was just like oh i was like oh i, I didn't i just didn't it didn't cross my mind so much mm-hmm. of what it is i was leaving to go to the dominican republic as well so some beautiful way I was able to travel and because I haven't seen my friends for like over a year we were able to travel to Dominican Republic so I went over there to have a holiday and go see them um so I left the UK went to the Dominican and had a holiday and came back and then every time I would go out you know for lunch or whatever it is Matthew will pop up and be there like where I was (laughs) so now that I know now what what I know is because of mutual friends are like mm-hmm. Shanina's here. He would get in the car and be like, I like rushed to go so he could see me face to face. He was trying to create FaceTime. Yeah. So when did you guys exchange your number finally? Um, we were like we went out a few times and we were talking at a party and he we were about to go home and it was late and he dropped he dropped me off and he's like, and I we swapped numbers then. And that was cute. And then we were talking here and there. Uh, he's not a tech sub, so for until today, he was that was his way of like he was texting me a lot. Um, and I think what I liked about him, I would, didn't want to be in a relationship. <laughs> I just wanted to. I, I think my guard was up because of my past relationships, but it was really important for me to get to know somebody and just get to know them and maybe enjoy their time and figure it. Out, you know, and that was it. Not take anything seriously. So. But he had a he had another plan. He wanted to have a girlfriend, so yeah. he was like, "Why, why is this girl not interested in me to be on it?" And I was like, "I'm just happy to get to know you." Which is made usually it, girls just jump on. Yeah, we were handsome, very emotional. So yeah. yeah, so I um um no, but he took me on a date, and it, like we decided to go on a date, and it was very it was really nice because we yeah it was fun and just just basically getting to know each other mm-hmm. and it was really really nice and then um I think he we moved back to he went back to LA after like December he obviously stayed longer in the UK more everyone says but more so for me which was sweet but then um we went back to LA and we were here and um I think we decided to live together after like a year and a bit and then so you guys live together we live together because, like, from your Instagram and because we haven't seen each other for so long, I'm like, wait, does he live in London? Does he live here? Like, He just travels a lot. So he's in the UK quite, quite a bit. And okay. also, um, but, uh, yeah, we, li- we, uh, we live together. We have a house. Um, so we live together and then um, not planned. <laughs> and by, you know, just 
by the god i guess god, 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 god <laughs> willing and yeah, yeah but yeah just uh, it was unplanned but um zai came and decided to come along it was very weird because i was sick with covid um and i fell pregnant after i had covid or like right near it so um and i was also in nigeria and oh i had malaria i was on malaria tablets oh i was like on all these tablets and i was very not well because obviously when you come off covid you're you know well your immune system is not the best mm -hmm. but um yeah i i guess I, I conceived when i was in nigeria and oh, it was yeah, a it was nice. a shock when i found out because yeah i fun trip, then. it was a fun trip <laughs> yeah <laughs> so much happened it was on a holiday <laughs> it was christmas it was um tis the season <laughs> Yeah, that's so well. That was actually my next question. So in Sept on September, was it 19, 2022, you welcome baby Zach? Uh, September 16th. 19. I saw online somewhere that it said 19. There's Daily Mail. Uh, da uh, the Daily Mail announced my, pretty much the press announced my pregnancy, my birth, the birth of Zai before I did, which is it's, it's frustrating, but it mm. comes with well, the territory. Um, I think... My mum's Facebook is on private, but someone mm -hmm. from her Facebook okay, okay, okay. leaked it. I see. Okay. When yeah. they made a mistake, they said on September 19th. Yeah. Um, but it's the 16th. The 16th, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So you welcomed baby boy Zai. Yes. Uh, that's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, my God. We have so many questions about you as a mom. Oh, I no. If we have so much time to oh, ask. That's okay. Let me, check, uh, let me check that she's okay. Yeah. She's fine. Well, you kind of already answered if you guys plan it you didn't so it just like happened so it's like a miracle baby it's kind of like yeah. me and bryant as well we had no idea that i got pregnant um but how was your reaction when you found out and how you found out i uh i found out when i was in australia so after i traveled um i was in christmas in um nigeria and then i went to australia um and I found out while I was over there I was out I was like um yeah I think I was I was out with my girlfriends the night before too and I was in such denial about what was happening because obviously usually the first sign of pregnancy is a missed period but at the time <laughs> Because of COVID and um, and this is, I'm sure it happens with a lot of women, it, kind of COVID has played like a huge role in their menstrual cycle and it's like made it longer or shorter or they missed something. So that's what happened. So I thought travel, whatever it may be. Um, and then I had a dream. I had a dream that I was pregnant. I was look, I, in the dream. I looked down and I said I was pregnant and that's what got me up the morning to go take a pregnancy test. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really annoying. Let me go take a pregnancy Your test. Your subconscious mind, like, you know. It was just like, it was, right? I think um, my friends know this. I have like a gift of um, dreams. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe in like sometimes when we receive messages and we, mm -hmm. if we remember our dreams, it's a message that we, I write down my dreams if I remember them because I believe something, someone's trying to tell me something or it's just, you know, um, you know, preparing me for something, whatever it may be. So, yeah, I was like, okay, this is a message. I guess I got to, like, take it on board. But it was bothering me. I was like, oh, my gosh, let me just take this. And, like, I'm not pregnant. Was Matthew with you when you took the test? No. So how did you tell him? Oh, over FaceTime. <laughs> what was his reaction? He freaked out. <laughs> Any guy will. <laughs> he oh, yeah, freaks out. He yeah. freaked out. Um, he's a busy guy. And he's kind of like, oh, wow, this is, you know, and it was very early in our relationship yeah. as well. So it was quick. It was quick, you know. Um, but I think for me, it was just I really wanted a, a child and a baby. And I think it was the right timing for me. And it was like, OK, uh, I, this is what I want to do. And yeah, and he's been supportive of me having Zai and, and, you know, really excited. And obviously for a dad and, you know, it makes it really scary as well. Like it's really the unknown as well. So, mm -hmm. but he's, it's made like a really beautiful journey for both of us. And, um, and I was really lucky. I had a very easy, beautiful um, pregnancy. So. 
you look gorgeous Thank and you. you worked out so you had energy right yeah I had um I had a lot of energy for some months I pregnant too. I kind of wish that I had like Less a energy. little sluggish <laughs> and uh, pregnancy so and you could rest more so so I can rest being, more because yeah. when they tell you like you need to sleep yeah, now yeah. because you're not gonna sleep again I'm like oh my god there's I a reason for I, was it. Like, I was I, the same way yeah mm -hmm. I had a lot of energy I worked the most while I was pregnant I was traveling a lot obviously with the clearance of my doctor as well um and I was working and traveling and working out I felt really great I worked out through my whole pregnancy as oh my well gosh. I was sluggish on a couch yeah. for two years of my two pregnancies wow well, wow but you had girls too so I think I was I think up. boys boys as oh, well sorry okay you keep on the conversation no, they? sometimes it's like a old wife's tales with like the it's testosterone true, yeah. the hormones of a male like it gives women more energy they say also the they girls say take your beauty away yeah and I had two of them and you look you were beautiful yeah. it's stunning it's yeah funny. yeah oh, <laughs> what you were yeah. you are what am I talking about you are stunning but like yeah during your pregnancy you're beautiful Thank you, yeah, yeah you look great I think that it's like we're talking about before it's like it's the it's the vitamins as well mm -hmm. and yeah but I, I did uh I did classes I had an amazing doctor I really wanted to do a very somewhat natural like yeah I wanted to do like a natural approach as much as much as I could I wanted to excuse me go, do it in the hospital but you know naturally naturally I didn't want to have Pitocin um I wanted to see if I can get through it without an epidural um how did I go <laughs> my my doc my doctor laughed at me because every time he's like he had to write down like what my birth plan was or what I wanted to do and every time I go in I was like I just don't want to suffer and he would just laugh at me he was That's like so funny well you know but suffering pain and suffering is different you know yeah, suffering it's like kind of harsh it's like right? you're putting you know mm -hmm. it's really really hard it's suffering yeah. so there's even doing it really naturally if you try, choose to do it at home birth like there's other there's maneuvers or ways to get out of the suffering it could be like music or massage or dark rooms or you know, whatever it may be, whatever is going to make you feel better. There's just different ways to get out of it. Um, and then, um, so he goes, we'll see how you go. Like, obviously, like, that's what Can was my I ask plan. You who was your doctor? Um, Dr. Paul H. Crane. Oh, wow. No, I don't He's know. Okay. really like um, Courtney Kardashian's doctor. Okay. Yeah. When Which she, hospital was he? Uh, Cedars. Mm. That's it, yeah. Um, I... Not because I didn't choose um, Dr. Crane because of Courtney and Courtney. No, no, don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Um, no, I had a girlfriend that have been, worked with um, Dr. Crane and was just like, he's amazing. And so when I called, when I found I was pregnant, I was like, what do I do? Oh, wait, I know him. Yeah. I did interview him before I uh, went with my doctor. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's also incredible, actually. Yeah. He's kind of similar to Dr. Crane. He's Pat old school. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like, I believe that Dr. Crane was born into this world to bring <laughs> – to bring life mm -hmm. like he just he's no he can do it with his eyes closed and he's so amazing and I um but when I called the doctor's office because I called another office and I was like I don't know what to do like we're pregnant what do you do like what do I like yeah just sit here for like a few weeks and wait because they're like you have to wait till like eight weeks one doctor's office is like oh we don't we have to see you really till like your 10 weeks or like eight weeks mm -hmm. and I was like I don't feel comfortable with that that's kind of weird and they're like you and because of COVID, you know, can't have your partner in here and also the doctor you have, like, we're not sure if you give birth that the doctor that you want will be there. I was like, this is not like, okay. <laughs> I called Dr. Crane's office and they're like, oh, you're early, but it'd be great. Dr. Crane would love to see you and see where you are so you feel comfortable. So, you know, what the next steps are. And then I was like, could I bring my partner? And they're like, yes, of course, but he has to wear a mask. Wow. And I was like, so I just felt like this is really good and feel, mm -hmm. I feel really comfortable um and his approach um is really um yeah like he's honored by so many doulas as well because obviously they do a lot of like at home births yeah, but yeah they love how he works as a, like in a practice and in a medical in medical terms so um I really loved him because he goes pretty much anywhere you want to give birth how you just tell me and I'll be there for you and it's really rare kind of in 
this day and age, especially in America, like how to give birth in hospitals, you're kind of like women are puppy mills. They're just like, all right, you're having the baby. Let's hurry it up and I mean, get it's you out. Up. They give it's... you C-section for any mm-hmm. reason. They give you C-section mm-hmm. 80% of the time when you actually don't, don't need, need it. it. It's You don't need it. You and then, and I learned a lot about that, like the role of what your body is so smart. When you are having a baby, your body is doing everything it needs to do and the chemi- the chemistry that's happening in your body to bring the baby on. So when you like, and again, this is just my journey and whatever you want to do, like my girlfriend's had a different journey from they gave birth. Like my girlfriend's like, I want Pitocin. I want to like just feel like I don't want to feel anything because I just want to bring the baby and that's what's going to relax me. That's fine. Yeah. But for me, it's just um, when your chemistry is to bring this baby into the world, sometimes like the drugs play a role of to like stop it and like make it slower and that's just how it is. It's um, – and I ended up doing doing the epidural anyway because <laughs> I had I had a really good no I had it really really good. I actually had to go to the doctor's office. I went to Doctor Crane's office and I um I started getting high blood pressure and he oh, did wow. he started doing things to get the baby going and pitocin. Sorry, pitocin. No, like yeah. natural ways. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even figure out the name. Sweeping. The sweeping. Yeah. And it's so painful. It's painful. Ooh, I did sweep is... in my second one. I haven't yeah. even heard about sweeping. It's just a, instead of like choosing drugs, this is a more natural way to like mm-hmm. get, especially for your first baby, it yeah. takes, it's like, it's up to the woman's body to like mm-hmm. get the cervix yeah. to open. It's usually the baby that's ready. It's just the woman's like, oh, yeah. this is a really brand new thing. Yeah. I don't know. I had acupuncture as well right before, and that's what really helped me to, like, mm-hmm. get my myself dilated. But then um, I started getting high blood pressure. I did a sweep, and I won't talk about it here, but if you want to look it up, look it up and to see what that, what, <laughs> how that, what happens. And so. <laughs> I was going to explain it. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to explain I'm it. Like, There's <laughs> men in this room, too. I was like, you can Google it. You can just yeah. what, what sweeping is. Um so I did a sweep and then... I think I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew was like, oh, my God. <laughs> he was like, whoa. He was like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I went to Dialogue Cafe. It's a very famous cafe here in LA. And I was miserable. I was in so much pain. But then I felt like a, a pain that went up and, like, held for, like, a minute or something like that and went away. And I was like, oh, I think I'm... I'm in labor. Aww. And so I started tracking my um, my contractions. And at the time, it was like every hour or something like this. So it was really slow. And then um, Matthew was like, do you think I have time to quickly run to this meeting? I was like, yeah, I think so. Like, it's fine. Yeah, I'm like, it's just it's, like it's LA. Like, what is it? Everything's mm. like 15 minutes away. It's fine. And it was a Friday. And not even two hours later, I was five minutes apart. And oh, I, wow. Yeah. Stop it. Two hours. Oh, wow. And we were like, you, if my mom was calling, Matthew's like, you need to get back now. We have to go to the hospital like now, now, now. I was in so much pain because my also my contractions were quite long. I was getting – they were a minute and a half and they were like four minutes, five minutes. Wow. So I wasn't really getting a break. And it was oh, – I don't even remember that ride because it was a Friday. You were like, ah, I'm just screaming. <laughs> no, I just – I get very quiet okay, okay. when I'm in pain. So I um, – my mum just said every time I was in a contraction, just put my hand up and then put it down when it's done. Seriously? So she can track it because I just – I couldn't talk. Oh, she was here with you, mum? Yeah. My oh. mum was here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, she was here for two months to help me. Oh. It was really nice. So I got to the hospital and – I was trying to fight and to not do an epidural and my mum was, you know, coaching me and she was there and my mum was the one that told me, she was like, Shanina, I know you're trying to fight and like yeah. do this, but you're in a lot of pain. And she said to me, she's like, maybe it's okay. Like if you want to have an epidural, like do it, it might relax you. And just so you can mm-hmm. be with yourself and focus. And I think that was really supportive words that I needed to hear. And I was in a lot, I was just in a lot of pain. So, and I was trying to fight it and I couldn't do that. And I said, okay, I would, I'm going to do the epidural. But I made sure when I was pushing that I had a low epidural. dose. Mm. Yeah. I wanted to feel the pushing. Yeah. Um, so when I got to the hospital, I was about four and a half centimeters 
dilated. And you had so much pain. Yeah. Yeah, you I had would, like three centimeters. So I was like... You guys, you would have so much pain if you were 10. You would yeah. be dying. Yeah. So at four and a half, I had a lot of pain. Oh, wow. And usually what happens when you have the epidural is it slows down your labor. It like... Yeah. Usually that's what happens. And that's why women, that's why the hospital gives you Pitocin to speed things up yeah. again, because it's just taking too long, kind of like relaxes everything. Mm -hmm. So I fell asleep and, you know, was relaxed. And uh, my doctor's like, all right, we're going to check you within an hour and see how things are going. And within an hour, I was 10 centimeters. Same happened to me. Yeah. When I got an epidural. Yeah. One minute and she came up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so quick. And he goes, yeah, you're ready to push. I was like, oh my gosh. And just, I think as, as a woman, especially your first, you're just like, oh, my life's going to, it's like passing mm -hmm. by. You're like, oh my God, my life's going to so change magical. forever. So it was really a beautiful birth because it was very calm. Like, I think uh, my boyfriend expected like an ER like episode that was <laughs> happening, like blood and everything <laughs> like that. And he goes, it was just really, it was the opposite of that. It was very calm. Um, there wasn't a lot of blood or anything like that. And my doctor was like, yeah, it was a really like easy, beautiful birth. Um, what did you feel in the air when that moment just baby comes out? What did you feel in the air? I could feel so much. I don't know. How I pulled Zai out. I pulled yeah. him out. I, then I, that wasn't a plan too, but that, it happened. It was spare of the moment. But um, I thought I was going to cry, but like I was about to cry, but then I was just like felt so much joy. It was like when Zai like, you know, it came on my chest and it's just, yeah. It's You're going to cry again? I know. Yeah, so cry again. It's, group cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much joy. It's so beautiful um, when he came out. You just, your life just changes and you just can't believe that you're like carrying this human inside of you and, and you know, outside. yeah. And he was, and then he latched on straight away. I decided to breastfeed and he latched on straight away. Like, and, um, yeah, my life just changed forever. And he's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's just, his eyes is out of control. He, when he was born, he had the most, like I, same with me, I had yeah. royal blue eyes and he had like very royal blue eyes. So beautiful. that's where he's yeah. exactly like his dad, but he just has my eyes. So, yeah. So he's dark. With very light, beautiful eyes. Yes. I know. I mean, I'm like, the girls are just going to be. The girls are going to And he oh, loves yeah. girls. Loves women. That's good. He That's loves good. women. He's just like, you know, just <laughs> loves to be around and like flutters his eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh. But um. Well, he's actually here. I can't wait to meet he's him. He's here, but he's going for a walk. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. So do you feel like all the like stuff, bullshit, that you used to care about and be stressed about. Oh my god, yeah. After the birth of your child, you just like it's true. Yeah. You know. I think with um with the idea, especially with the modeling industry, like if you have a baby, like works kind of like so there's a taboo mm -hmm. <laughs> and stereo like it's a, it's taboo, but it's also like there's there's a idea that goes around that it like work's done like you're finishing your career and that's just like gone out the window yeah. it's not true and things that worried me before I still worry and stress about things that's just part of my nature yeah um but it doesn't matter to me and I think I've and I've lost a lot actually I think babies bring a um a lot of good luck and I think it's done like a cleanse in my life of people who should be here and shouldn't um be here and that is so beautiful that you said mm -hmm. yeah and yes. I didn't realize I just I literally have gone through such a cleanse when Zai came and, and I was like wow maybe these people are not meant to be in my life yeah. because they're not supportive of maybe me having a baby or what I need to do to have a child or my relationship whatever it may be or like what I've got going on and you just learn so much I think through death marriage and birth you learn a lot about your community and who you're surrounded with because that is like the really like hard times and those are the people that you know you really like the people that you don't rely on the most the sorry let me say this again yeah the people that you don't think that you know are common in your life they come around and you're like oh wow it's like they're here for you and you didn't think they were but you know you find out a lot through a lot of hardships in life 
but um but also really joyful moments as well so um I learned that through my the birth of my child as well and yeah no he just brings so much fun and love and your life changes forever and it's stressful but um no regrets I would like do it all over again yeah are you ready for second one? Oh my gosh, okay, I'll say it all the time. No. <laughs> I'm not yeah, ready. I hear you. I'm not ready. Not yet. Yeah. No. But uh, hopefully, maybe we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think I'm just going with the flow. Enjoy. Oh, Enjoy so the beautiful, beautiful one you have right now. Yeah. Oh. Two is hard, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible twos. No, I mean two. Babies. Two kids. Oh, two kids. Two, 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 yeah, two. Yeah, you have two. It's yeah. um. Yeah, it's like a, it's a crowd, isn't it? Too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know what they say: one is one, two you're fucked, <laughs> or two it's twenty. That's what I heard. Oh, <laughs> didn't hear it's twenty. Or oh, whatever they say. Whatever well, they Shania, say. We are oh. so grateful and happy you could join us. Thank it you. Was so beautiful. Thanks for the chat. I loved it. I love talking with you guys. You're such an amazing person. I know. And like, Bless I feel like I want to cry now again, I just because we <laughs> so can hug and cry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like truly inspirational and I think a lot of people will relate to you and, and it's just a beautiful story and I'm so happy for everything that's going on for you oh, and for future you. and skincare you can do amazing things oh I'm so happy for you guys as well like honestly like being moms and taking charge and like you know building a business whatever you be like whatever it may be and then also like having a hobby and taking care of kids you're doing so much so you should, both of you should be so proud of yourself so Thank you. Thank and thanks you. for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, I love you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>